Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the similarities and differences between two carbonyl containing mechanisms. I remember a mechanism is something that shows the movement of electrons in a chemical reaction and a carbonyl is this functional group here, this reactive carbon double bonded to oxygen group. So if we have a look at these two mechanisms, there's a few things we can look out for, such as what is the nucleophile and electrophile? What are the type of bonds broken and formed? Is there an intermediate? And are there any side products? So if we have a look at the nucleophile, remember a nucleophile is an electron pair donor. It's ammonia in the addition elimination mechanism and a hydride ion, which is H- minus in the nucleophilic addition mechanism. So the nucleophile is different in both. And you can see it has a charge in the nucleophilic addition mechanism where it doesn't in the addition elimination one. So that's our first difference. So we can say the nucleophile is charged H minus in the nucleophilic addition mechanism, whereas it is a neutral molecule. in the addition elimination mechanism. So this ammonia can still act as a nucleophile because it has a lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen. And in this reaction, the electrophile is this molecule here, which is propanone, it's a ketone, Whereas in this one, the electrophile is this acid chloride, ethanol chloride. And we could say a similarity is the electrophiles in both contain a carbonyl functional group. And then if we look at type of bonds formed next, we can see that this hydride ion is donating a pair of electrons to the carbon, and that's resulting in a carbon-hydrogen bond being formed. Whereas in this one, the ammonia molecule is donating a pair of electrons to the carbon, and that forms this carbon-nitrogen bond there. Next, we want to look at bonds broken. So when a bond is broken, the arrow, the electrons come from the bond and go onto an atom. So we're breaking this carbon-oxygen double bond to form a single carbon-oxygen bond, but that um, later reforms. We're also breaking a nitrogen-hydrogen bond. So let's highlight that. Then in this one, we're breaking the carbon-oxygen double bond to form a carbon-oxygen single bond, and that doesn't reform this time. In fact, that oxygen acts as a nucleophile and picks up a hydrogen from a water molecule. And that water molecule isn't just random. It's there because this whole reaction is done in aqueous solution, so there's plenty of water molecules hanging around. So let's highlight that one of these carbon-oxygen bonds is broken. So in fact we could say in both, the carbon-oxygen double bond breaks to form a carbon-oxygen single bond. But a difference is, in this one, 
that carbon-oxygen double bond reforms, when this one it doesn't. So bonds formed then, these are differences. In nucleophilic addition, a CH bond is formed. Whereas in addition elimination, a carbon nitrogen bond forms. Next, we can look at the intermediates. So, an intermediate is something formed in the middle of a chemical reaction and it usually has a charge, which these two do. So we can jot that down for a similarity. I'll do that up here. Both mechanisms have an intermediate. And for a difference, we could say that this intermediate has a negative charge, whereas the intermediate in this reaction has two charges, a negative and a positive. And lastly, let's look at the side products. So both reactions form a side product. Or we can call it a byproduct, the same thing. Whereas the difference is, what exactly is that side product? So in this reaction, it's OH minus, whereas in this one, it's a molecule, hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid.